Hello, Stetler. Uh, good morning. It is Tuesday, October 6th, uh, and welcome to another awesome edition of StetlerLocal.com TV. Today, I'm with Carson Ellis to start us off from uh, our town, Stetler. Um, he's got all the latest digs on history. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best way to phrase that, but... <laughs> um, all the new stuff on the old stuff. All the new stuff on the old stuff. That's, that should be your slogan. Yeah. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Um, but yeah, Carson came here today with something about the uh, the Stetler School. Um, and yeah, I'm going to let you take it from here. Okay. Well, today I'm going to talk a little bit about... Hopefully that's... Oh, that's all right. I'll hold it up. The old Stetler School. Uh, that one there. That one was built in 1910. And it kind of sat... It'd basically be... And I call it the junior high because that's when I went to school. I don't know what the new term is. But it basically sat where the junior high building is. Okay. And uh, it was built to replace the one that was built in 1904, which is now the courthouse at the museum. Okay, yeah. Uh, and this was actually quite the, quite the school. Uh, built uh, uh, all brick. The, the, there's stone around it for trim that came from Calgary. Okay. Uh, it had a basement, a main floor, a second floor, and then an upper floor. Uh, the basement, there was a boys' playroom and a girls' playroom. Each of them were uh, about 24 by 32 feet. Uh, there was also right. two large lavatories. Yeah, okay. Um, bathrooms or? Bathrooms, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I think basically a bathroom, a lavatory is different from a bathroom because a lavatory has the sink and the toilet. Okay. That, that's how I understand the difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then the first floor had four large classrooms that were 25 feet by 32 feet. There was a 12 foot wide corridor that went crosswise and a 15-foot corridor that ran lengthwise, uh, 15 feet wide, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then the second floor was basically the same thing, but it also had the library. Uh, it had uh, a teacher's lounge, the principal's office, and then the uh, there was a boardroom as well. And then on the third floor, uh, that's where they had the assembly room, which was 70 feet by 30 feet. Uh, the building was You're wired cute. for electricity. Oh, so their assembly room, like their gymnasium almost, uh, I guess? Yeah, well, the, play, the gym would basically be the playrooms in the basement from what I understand. Okay, okay. And then the assembly room would be upstairs for special occasions. Right, right, makes sense. Meeting halls and or stuff like that. Like a ballroom yeah. kind of look, I guess? Yeah, kind of that sort of a bigger... Okay. What we use gyms for now, they used for various things up top. Yeah. Uh, it was actually fairly, it was fairly modern. Uh, at the time it opened, there was nothing like it in the province. Okay. Really? Uh, yep. Uh, Stellar does that. We we build really good for the first couple of years. Yeah. And then the cities catch up. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, it was wired for electricity. It had an electric bell. Uh, it had a duplex uh, heating and air uh, heating and steam system that would ventilate and heat the school. Mm -hmm. uh, it was opened by Premier Arthur Sifton on Mar in March of 1911. Uh, now that school sat there for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, they built around it. In the 1950s, when I think the first company was Gulf, found oil and gas in the area, yeah. Stetler exploded. Right. So right. it quickly became too small for the town. Uh, they did build an elementary to alleviate some of it, but by the time the elementary was built, it was still fairly out of date. Mm -hmm. So in 1956, they decided to do a huge uh, a $400,000 expansion project, which would add a net another half to the elementary school, Okay. Uh, tear this down and build a new segment. And then there was another segment apparently already on the other side of it. So okay. it would basically attach the three mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. um, the head of the Stetler School Board at the time did say it was unfortunate that they had to tear down such a historic building. Right. But I think the big thing was it kind of came to, if you renovate it, you're still limited in what you can do. Right. Whereas if you tear it down and build brand new for basically the same price, mm -hmm. you can get more options. Right. And at right. the time, to make Stetler more competitive and draw more people in, they wanted to have more commercial programs like uh, right. industrial arts. They wanted to have a better home ec system. So it, mm -hmm. they, they were limited in what they could do in that. And that's why I think they tore it down. And that's how you draw people in, right? You attract. You get, you, you get you your better school system. And, the yeah. parents are and especially with so many willing. people coming in for oil, mm -hmm. they wanted kids to have a future in the oil industry. So For sure. So, so you said it exploded in 1911, right? So... Or no, uh, just the, after the, that. It, it opened in 1911. Yeah. And then when the oil came to town in 1950s. Oh, I see. Right, right. Um, yeah, it, Settlers always growing rather fast. Yeah. 
What would the population of the school look like? How many, like how many it, people it, do you think it the, would be? The Stetler School had a capacity of about 500 students. Initially? Initially. When, it, when, when this one was built, it, it could hold about 500 students. Right, okay. Uh, roughly, that's, that's maybe not huge. comfortably, but you could hold. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a big school. It doesn't look like it because the plate, but right. I, right. I've seen <laughs> other pictures of it, and it's quite the big. So you're saying it's bigger than it looks like on the yeah. plate? Yeah, yeah. It was actually quite a large school. <laughs> yeah, this is not to scale. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then yeah, when uh, like like a good way to look at how Stetler grew in 1906 when everybody started building. It was a fairly slow building. Then a fire came in 1908, in October of 1908. Right. Burned pretty much all the downtown core. Mm -hmm. uh, by October of 1909, there was more people in Stetler and more building in Stetler than there had been the year previous. Wow. So Stetler's kind of had that habit. It, it'll hit lulls like any other community, mm -hmm. and then it just grows really fast. Yeah. The reason yeah. they had to build this school is because the one they built in 1904, by the time it was opened, it was too small. Okay. So they were already running out of room. Yeah, yeah. So Stetler's always had kind of growth problems. Mm hmm and then yeah, in the fifties, when everybody, when when the oil and the money was here, yeah, it really blew up. That's that's really interesting because I like what you're doing, and I really like your perspective on history because it applies to how we can go forward, right, and how we can manage growth or um, even grow grow as it is, mm -hmm. right? I think history is super important that way. So. Yeah, and, and I, I've definitely learned to to appreciate a lot more things. Yeah, because um, it, it it's hard. Like you can. Spend all your money, build the biggest, fanciest school ever, and then mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. But Settler's also been lucky because we had the oil in the 50s. Yeah. That, that was a large part of the money coming in, but we've always had a very diverse farming mm -hmm. and agricultural background, so that's helped a lot. Oh, yeah, for sure. And a stable background, too. A stable, right? yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if cattle's not doing so great one year, uh, grain usually does okay. And if grain's not doing good, mm -hmm. um, another way to look at it, I, I read this in a book, if you go down Highway 56 up to a certain point... You can grow really great on one side of the highway and absolutely nothing on the other but grazing land. Right. So that's how diverse the Stetler area has always been. That's true. So, we, so we've always been pretty good mm -hmm. at different things, and that's why we it, 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 you got to kind of figure out what right. to plan for. Right. Yeah, so this school lasted for 46 years, and they tore it down and then built which school? Uh, far as I, I don't know exactly what the new school looked like. I think okay. it was basically... Basically, what I uh, how I understand it is they built the second wing of the elementary, right? Uh, they expanded the original seg segment of the elementary, and then w they built basically what would be the junior high and the high school. Okay. But both of those schools did catch fire in the eighties too, so they look very different. What is it with fires and Stetler? Well, back then Insurance everything. Wait, well, back in nineteen oh eight when everything burnt down, it was all made of wood. Okay. Uh, you know, Makes pioneers came coming to the area didn't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. so they built things out of whatever they could. Yeah, like some of your most successful in businesses in Stetler were clapboard and right whatever. Mm -hmm. So it was a matter of funding. Um, after the fire of nineteen hundred eight, they built more things out of brick. Okay, but the first national hotel was built out of brick, and that thing burnt down too because it was too big for the fire department. Crazy. <laughs> so it, a lot of it is just the materials, but right. back then they also a lot of fire safety and stuff. Uh huh. I think. It, your perspective on again, your perspective is so interesting on this. I'd love to get like a full timeline of what has happened in Stetler and like the growth periods and all that. I'd stuff try to put together a timeline. I'm just not an organizer. Yeah, <laughs> I've got notes of every kind of year. I just don't put them by the year. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't have much time left, so um, I've heard you're doing calendars. I hope to do calendars again this do you year. Do you want to yeah. uh, just expand on that? And uh, I do it? calendars uh, kind of as a fundraiser project. Mm -hmm. uh, I did them last year. Um, saving up to kind of do a project with uh, Kevin Falkenberg at Hor Hornet. Oh, don't say that wrong. Hornet Aerial Imaging. Yep. Uh, to kind of do a photographic uh, record of Stetler. Okay. Uh, before that, my first year I sold them. I did a train station giveaway mm -hmm. where I bought a voucher for the Alberta Prairies, and they were great to work with. Okay. I said, "Hey, this is what I'm doing. What, what, what are my options?" And they said, "Let us know what your budget you're working with." And they were mm -hmm. great. They held on to the ticket so that. I didn't have to arrange pickup, so basically I sell the calendars to raise money for other projects, right. uh, history projects or giveaways. Awesome. Yeah, it's really good to hear. Yeah. Cool. Well, I want to thank Carson for coming on again. He's become a staple here on StetlerLocal.com TV. Uh, yeah, thanks for all the information and everything. Not a problem. Um, and I want to thank, before we continue here, I want to thank the Stetler Public Library for supporting uh, our programming. 
as well as Stetler Auto Trust. So for all your truck and car and maintenance needs, visit www.auto-trust.ca. All right, Thanks a lot, Carson. I will get that and get out of your way. How's the train set going? And How's up next, we have uh, Dave Guba from the library, and I will let him take over here. Grab a seat. Good morning. I'm David Guba. I'm president of the Stetler Genealogy Club. Uh, give you some information about genealogy for any of you who are interested in discovering your family roots while exploring your family tree. Uh, many people <laughs> approach me and ask me about what is genealogy and why bother doing genealogy? What's, what's the importance to it? I think a lot of people, they, um, they'll see programs on TV, uh, Finding Your Roots, and such, and they're, they're interested in knowing us, you know, where do they come from? Uh, what is my culture? Am I, you know, Swedish, Hungarian, uh, German? What, 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 what kind of food should I be interested in in the, in the history? Um, but important part of knowing why to do genealogy, besides the curiosity, is uh, medical history. Uh, I had a heart attack a year ago, and I really didn't realize that uh, uh, heart and stroke uh, concerns were in my family until I started doing some research after my heart attack, and I go, okay, now it's time to let everybody in the family know. So those are things you can look and find out about your family, uh, about yourself, is looking at uh, your, your medical information. Um, another important part, again, as I have said, is learning your family culture. A lot of us are mixed breeds, you could say. I'm uh, half Hungarian, quarter Swedish, uh, an eighth Scottish, an eighth Prussian. Uh, so we're all, a lot of us are mixtures. Uh, and there are a few purebreds out there, like my wife, she's pure Austrian. Um, so you're getting to learn more about your cultures and we get such a mixed, mixed bag here where, you know, everybody likes hung, uh, hamburger and fries, but how about cabbage rolls? How about uh, pierogies? How about some different foods that you can enjoy that is part of your family tradition that maybe your parents had made for you, uh, maybe your grandparents, you can remember special meals or, and breads and such. Uh, so learn about your culture. Uh, and some people even are learning their languages. I, I spent a couple of years in Hungary in the summertime teaching English as a second language and had the opportunity to be learning Hungarian and staying with local uh, families and so enjoying the culture and learning about my, my family past. In fact, I was able to go back and go to my village where my grandfather came from and my great-grandparents and attend the church, uh, attend the wedding, um, and to celebrate Hungarian style, so it was, it was quite a pleasure for me. Um, and then for those on the religious side, the, the, some of us are, are uh, of different religions from Protestant, uh, Catholic, uh, get to you know, know some of your family history. And like I said, I visited the local church in my home village and it was quite interesting. Um, but another thing is, is doing research, and I get asked all the time, is how to, how, how do I start? Where do I start? How, how do I do my family history, my, my genealogy? I, I want to get going. Well, here's some basic tips. Just get a piece of paper, write down your information. You know, write down about what you know. You know, you're the best source of information. So start right away with what you, what you want to know. So. Uh, I always tell people you need the correct information. So, for example, I'm David Henry Guba. So that is my legal name on all documents. To, and that's what you want to look for. I'm not Dave. I am David. So you want to correct information. You know, such as Bill. You don't want Bill. You want William. So, uh, same thing. You want all the correct information. And then you also want correct birth dates. So, as, you know... Like I'm born May 19th, 1953, and so you start with yourself, and then you do your siblings. So you know what your brothers is, you, and then you know also your parents. So you put in your your parents' information, all the information you know. So you want correct name, correct birth date, correct birthplace, 
and then uh, marriage information, and then your wife's information, but then also now you got your parents' information. So start with information you know, and then if you don't know, go to go to your parents. Get their information. If your grandparents are still here, which are valuable source of information, uh, all our seniors out there were just were loaded with. Uh, information we're, we're wanting and willing to share. So get your grandparents' information. Again, correct spelling of their names, where they were born, uh, birth dates, and what, what information they know in their head. And then record it. Write it down. Uh, start on a piece of paper. But what a lot of us do in genealogy, we, we purchase or you can find some free software programs on the computer and put the information in there. Document this information put inside and then save it. Uh, it's very important to, to make sure the information is correct. If you can get a copy of birth certificates or uh, marriage certificate, just any kind of information you can get. And that is uh, very important to, to document and have that information available. Um, and then again, record, get a sheet of paper, record the source who supplied that information to you. So this, that is why to do genealogy, and that is how to do it. That's the basics. And then a lot of people are familiar with, they'll see a lot of the commercials on TV from Ancestry. Now, Ancestry is a source for to do research. And for those of you uh, in the Stettler area, you can get on Ancestry for free. Yes, free. Um, you can get on through the Stetler Library, so you're able to get a free membership at the library. The library also has computers that you can use to, down uh, at the library, again, for free. And you can log on and get into the library edition of Ancestry.com, and you can do your research. So for information that maybe uh, your grandparents can't remember what ship they came on, there's passenger lists, there's all sorts of records of your family, and uh, I'll warn you now, uh, once you get going, there may not be any stopping, because you, once you get one set of information, then you go to the next, and then to the next, and it's, it's addictive. I, I must apologize uh, ahead of time for your time, because uh, you, you, you just want to know more, and know more, and know more, and this is a really a, a good way to do it. So, you can go down to the Stetler Public Library, uh, get a free membership, get access to the computers, get access to Ancestry.com, and start doing your research. Now, if you're at home, you have a computer, and you have access to the internet, you can also, with your uh, library membership, is log on to Ancestry from home, and again, and do your research. Now, there are other websites, I mean, the internet is full of information, uh, another popular website for research is, is Family Search. And again, you can put the inf uh, your questions in there as to who, you know, David Guba, and you'll go in there, it'll be lots of information. Um, now, one of the things you start doing now, you've got your information about you, your family, your parents, your grandparents, and all their brothers and sisters, and then you can just keep on going from there. You can go back to, I don't want to say back to Adam and Eve, because we all are related, right, back to Adam and Eve, so, you know, uh, but there's a whole lot of generations in, in between. Now, so once you have that, then there's different charts you can use, like pedigree chart, family uh, charts, and then you can start putting it down so you can visually see it in front of you, who's related to who, the first cousins, second cousins, you know, and go all the way back. Now, another question that I do get is people ask, because they see the advertising on the TV, about DNA. Uh, yes, it is another way to source and find out about your family. It is not a must-do. Uh, it's, it's a fun-do. Uh, I did it with my, uh, with my mother. I did it with an uncle. I did it with my wife to get the information as to who we are connected to. Uh, and I don't know if you, any of you has been watching um, Jed Match or any other programs on, on the TV about DNA searches, you can end up finding living cousins and, uh, you know, all around the world, depending on where you're from. So I do have relatives I've found in, in Sweden and Hungary and, and Scotland that I wasn't aware of before. 
by using the DNA. And it, it's, it's a fun source to, to use, eh? Um, so again, that's more information you can add to your, your family. Um, what I do recommend is once you start getting all this information is if you're on your computer, please back it up onto an external drive so you don't lose it. And another thing to do is put use a memory stick. I don't go anywhere without my memory stick because if I'm into the computer, you know, I can back the information up on that. So that's basically in a nutshell what genealogy is. Um, I'm available for any kind of questions at dguba at telus.net. My home phone number is 403-742-8369. If you're on Facebook, you can get to Stetler Genealogy and I try to put daily information of stuff that's coming up. Again, it's worldwide. There's just tons of information. Uh, and there's also a website. If you Google Stetler Genealogy, you'll come to our website. So any questions, I'm more than willing to, to answer and, and help you out where I can. Uh, there's no magic and it's not instantaneous. Uh, it, it's fun. Good. All right. You're good. Good. Thank you. I got some stuff on there. What's that? I think I got covered most of the stuff. So. Oh, I think so. Yeah. 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 Thanks a lot for coming on. We really appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess well, we can. Yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Take care. Yeah. And thank you, David Guba, for um, coming on and talking about genealogy. I believe he said if you Google Stetler genealogy, mm -hmm. you'll come to a website. I so if you want more information, if you want more information, um, yeah, feel free to visit that website. So up next, we have Katie Bainbridge from Thrive Through 60. She's going to, um, she's going to do a workout for us. So before that happens, I want to thank the Stetler Public Library again for sponsoring our programming. We really appreciate it, as well as Stetler Auto Trust for all your car, truck, and maintenance needs. Please visit www.auto-trust.ca. And here is Katie Bainbridge. Feel free to take the camera and move those chairs. Okay, sounds good. Thank yeah. you. No worries. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I am Katie Bainbridge from Thrive 360 Fitness here in Stetler. So today, what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, stretching and flexibility, and then I'll just uh, guide you through some stretches. Okay, so why do we want to stretch? So stretching helps with range of motion and flexibility. So as we age, flexibility can decrease by as much as 50%. So this might not be noticeable day to day, but you might suddenly one day uh, notice or discover that you're not able to get up off the floor as easily as you used to, or you might go to reach for something and, and, you, and something hurts, it just doesn't feel right. So a lot of the time that has to do with flexibility and just that decrease in flexibility as we age. Uh, so one of the best ways to maintain and improve your flexibility is through stretching. And there are two main types of stretching that we do. Uh, the first one is probably the one that people are the most familiar with. It's called static stretching. So that is where you hold a stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds or more. The second type of stretching is dynamic stretching. And dynamic stretching is when you're actively moving your muscles to stretch, like when you're doing arm swings or bum kicks. So today we're going to focus mostly on static stretches that you can do easily at home. So um, some things to remember when you are doing these stretches is that uh, you're going to hold them for about 30 seconds in each pose, 20 to 30 seconds. I, as I'm demonstrating them, I won't have enough time, I think, to hold each stretch that long because I think we only have about 10 or 12 minutes. Um, now, when you're stretching, what should it feel like? Uh, there used to be kind of this old idea that that it's okay to feel pain when you're stretching or maybe you should really push to get deeper into a stretch even though it's hurting and so that's just simply not the truth 
So with stretching, you do want to feel a stretch. You want to feel like there's a lengthening of, of some tissue there, and you're going to feel it. Um, it might feel, you know, like a slight pulling, but you, it should never feel painful. So if you're doing any of these moves and it's feeling painful, do not push past your pain. That's not okay to do. Just do what your body can do right now, and eventually, with time and with practice, your stretches will become a little easier to do and you're going to increase your flexibility and your range of motion. All right, so the first stretch that we're going to do, we can do this one seated. It's a neck side stretch. So I'm just gonna bring my chair up a little more here. So for this stretch, all I'm doing is I'm simply taking my neck and I'm letting it fall to the side. So I would hold that stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds. I can feel everything stretching. And then you can come back to center and then do the other side and hold that stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds. Good. The next stretch that we're gonna do is your shoulders and upper back stretch. So for this one, I'm going to do it standing. I'll move this chair out of the way. Okay, I'm just gonna move the camera a little bit. There we go. So I've got my hands, I'm gonna put my hands behind my back like this and stretching up. So from the back, it looks like this. I'm just holding that stretch for about 20 seconds. Come from side. So that stretches my upper back and my shoulders. The next one I'll do is a tricep stretch. So we're going to bend the elbow behind the head and try to kind of hold on to the elbow there. So I'm stretching right here in the triceps. So for this one, we don't want our head to be pushed forward. We want to be able to stand tall with this stretch. Again, just holding it for about 20 to 30 seconds. So I'm going to pretend that's 20 or 30 seconds. And now we'll do the other side, the other triceps. Another good tip for stretching, especially static stretching, is to stretch when you're warm. So even uh, like go for a little walk, do some moving around before you start stretching, or even a nice warm shower or bath and stretch after that. So everything will be a little more pliable. Okay, the next stretch I'm gonna do is a back stretch. I'll see if I can put this camera down just a little bit. So this is a standing back stretch. So I'm gonna put my hands on my hips and I'm just gonna look up a little bit and arch my back just a bit. This one is different. I'm only gonna hold it for about three seconds for this one. I don't wanna get cramped and stuck in that position, but it is a nice, lovely stretch where you can kind of push down on the hips a little bit and look up the, at the ceiling. And so for this one, we're just gonna hold it for three seconds, but do it about 10 times. We'll go again. You can feel that stretch throughout my back and my chest. There we go. So hold that one for three seconds. It's a bit of a dynamic stretch as well, so there's a little bit of movement involved, and you'll do it about 10 times. Okay, and the next one, good old-fashioned quad stretch. So I'll point this camera down so you can see what my legs are doing. Okay, so for the quad stretch, I'm going to use a chair for support, for balance. I hold on to my foot, and I'm stretching out my quad. Holding for about 20 to 30 seconds. And then we would do the other side. So we'll move my chair. Grab onto the toe of the foot, the top of the foot, and holding that side for 20 to 30 seconds.
good. The next stretch is a seated one. So this is for the ankles. So again, I'm going to see if I can make that camera go down. Oops, a little more. That might be as far as it's going to go. Um, let's see. I'm going to see if I can bring... So this one you would actually do in a chair. What I'm going to do here, just so that I can show you the rotation of the ankle, I'm going to prop my foot up on this chair. But when you're doing this, you're just going to sit on the chair and rotate the ankle. Okay, so you can see my ankle. I'm going to do circles with it. So about 10 circles. This is another dynamic stretch because I'm moving 10 circles in a clockwise direction. Now I'm going to go 10 circles in a counterclockwise direction. So again, when you're doing this stretch at home, you're going to be sitting comfortably in a chair. All right, the next one is a seated glute stretch. Let's see if we can put that camera down a little bit. There we go. So for this one, I'm taking my leg and I'm just crossing it on my knee. And to get a little more, I could push down a little bit. So I want to feel the stretch in here in this glute, standing tall and it's going to hold that for 20 to 30 seconds. And then we switch. Same thing on this side, standing tall and just holding for 20 to 30 seconds. Good. How am I doing for time here? Oh, you're fine. Keep going. Oh, okay. Take your time. The next two stretches are on the floor. So see if I can point that down. There we go. I look a little crooked on there, but. <laughs> okay, but we've got the floor view. This is what we want. So this stretch is a dynamic stretch. I'm going to be moving a bit. If you're familiar with yoga, you'll be familiar with this stretch. It's the cat cow stretch. So this is a really nice one for the back and the chest. So you start off on your hands and knees, flat back. And what you're going to do is you're gonna do the cat. So you're stretching, just imagining that belly button is going up to the ceiling. Hold it just for a few seconds. And then do the opposite of that, where you're lifting your chest, looking in front of you, and that belly button is going down towards the floor. So you just want to repeat those movements about 10 times. And the last stretch we have is for the back and the hamstrings. So lying flat on the floor, and you're just going to raise one leg up, and give that knee a little hug. Hold that stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds. And let it go. And then the other side. So a nice stretch for the back and the hamstrings. Okay, there we go. So those are all of the stretches. Um, so if you do those consistently, you can do those every day. You can even do them twice a day and you'll definitely end up feeling an improvement in your flexibility. Um, it really gets the blood flowing and everything too. There's nothing bad about stretching. Most people need to stretch more, myself included, because I'm kind of tight. So, <laughs> all right. So that's all for today. And I think we have Nick here to say a few words. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So yeah, big thank you to Katie here um, for keeping us limber. <laughs> uh, super important to stretch. I also need to stretch more. I was just doing the stretches here while she was doing them. And it was, I need to stretch more. Um, so yeah, I want to thank every one of our guests today. Uh, Carson Ellis, David Guba, and Katie again for coming on and, and making another awesome uh, hyper-local episode of stetlerlocal.com TV. I want to thank 
Stetler Public Library for sponsoring our program. And I also want to thank Stetler Auto Trust for all your car and truck maintenance needs. Please go to www.auto-trust.ca. And that's it for us today. We're signing off. Thank you very much.